Imagine walking through Tokyo, neon lights flicker, trains whiz by, and above your head would seen a labyrinth of cables, thick black wires coil around poles like mechanical serpents, tangling into a chaotic web that blots out the sky. Meanwhile, in Paris or Berlin, the streets are eerily clean, no cables, no poles, just open skies and historic architecture. How did two advanced societies end up with such wildly different approaches to something as mundane as cables? And which system is actually better? Let's untangle this wired mystery. Post-World War II, Japan wasn't just rebuilding, it was racing toward modernity. With cities flattened, the government prioritized speed over aesthetics. Cities like Tokyo and Osaka needed electricity, telephone lines, and later internet cables as fast as possible. The 1950 Public Utilities Act legalized overhead cables as a temporary fix. Underground infrastructure was too expensive, too slow. The solution? Poles lots of them, but later temporary became permanent. By the 1964 Tokyo Olympics, the city's skyline was already a nest of wires, yet the world marveled at Japan's rapid recovery. The cables symbolized progress, a visual reminder of Japan's post-war miracle. But there's another culprit. Earthquakes. Like a country sailing through the treacherous Grand Line, Japan sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, enduring over 1,500 earthquakes yearly. During the Great Hanshin Earthquake of 1995, aerial power lines were restored within a week, while underground sections took over two months to repair. Plus, Japan's dense cities leave little room for underground tunnels. The result? A sky cluttered with over 35 million utility poles and 650,000 kilometers of cables, enough to wrap around Earth 16 times. Interestingly, this spaghetti sky isn't just functional, it's become cultural. There's even a niche photography trend called Denki Shashin, meaning electricity photos where enthusiasts capture artistic shots of these sprawling networks against sunsets or cityscapes. For many, the cables symbolize Japan's command spirit, perseverance through chaos, but critics call it an eyesore, dubbing it the black vine disease of urban landscapes. Just as the people within Wall Maria built elaborate underground cities for protection, Europe's underground movement began long before World War II. In 1890, Vienna banned overhead wires to preserve its Baroque skyline. City planners buried telegraph lines beneath cobblestones, setting a continental precedent. After World War II, the Marshall Fund allocated $50 million, adjusted for inflation, to rebuild Europe's infrastructure but with a catch. Historic cities like Prague and Brussels had to prioritize aesthetics. This birthed the European Cable Code. Out of sight, out of mind. But not all cities followed smoothly. Rome's 1950s underground project unearthed ancient aqueducts, stalling work for years. Engineers dubbed it digging through a lasagna of history. Yet today, Rome's buried grid protects its UNESCO sites and tourists never spot a wire near the Colosseum. For Europe, there were lessons from World War II as well. During the Cold War, the threat of aerial bombardment pushed countries to protect their critical infrastructure. Cities like Paris, London, and Berlin began systematically burying their power lines. Today, the results are striking. 100% of power lines are underground in London and Paris, 98% in Berlin, while Japan ironically got nuked twice in World War II and sits at just 7% nationwide. In Europe, public opinion leans strongly toward cleanliness and orderliness. Cities like Zurich and Copenhagen pride themselves on being aesthetically pleasing and functional. To them, visible cables represent inefficiency and poor urban design. The benefits are clear. In Paris, during the devastating storms of 1999 that knocked out power to 3.4 million homes, areas with underground cables experienced 85% fewer outages than those with overhead lines. 
Similarly, during Germany's 2007 chiral storm, regions with underground infrastructure reported 75% fewer disruptions. The reliability difference is striking. In Munich, the average annual power outage duration per customer is just 12 minutes, compared to Tokyo's 21 minutes. However, when underground systems do fail, the average repair time is 100 hours versus 24 hours for aerial systems. But beauty comes at a price. The cost difference is staggering. To install one kilometer of underground power lines in Japan averages $3.6 million, while aerial installation costs just $170,000. That's more than 20 times the difference. In Europe, thanks to different construction methods and soil conditions, underground installation costs only about four to five times more than aerial installation. A perfect case study emerged in 2019 when Osaka decided to underground power lines in its historic Shinzakai district. The project cost $32 million for just 2.1 kilometers, but reduced power outages by 97% and increased property values by 23%. However, when a minor earthquake struck six months later, a damaged underground cable took 76 hours to locate and repair. So, which is better? Imagine this, a typhoon hits Tokyo, poles wobble, wires snap, and 100,000 homes lose power. In Frankfurt, a storm rages, but the lights stay on. Yet. When a quake strikes Kobe, crews restore power in days. In Lisbon, a water pipe bursts and repairing buried cables takes weeks. The verdict? It's a trade-off. Japan prioritizes resilience and affordability. Europe bets on safety and beauty. What about Uncle Sam? America's cable system is a patchwork quilt. Part Japan, part Europe, and 100% Pragmatic. In cities like New York or Chicago, you'll find buried power lines in downtown areas to protect against blizzards and hurricanes. But venture into suburbs or rural towns and poles dominate, draped with cables like Christmas garlands. Why the split? Well, it's all about geography and cost. The US spans 3.8 million square miles. Burying cables everywhere would bankrupt smaller towns. Plus, um, disaster shape strategy. Florida buries lines in hurricane zones while wildfire prone California spends billions to underground cables to prevent sparks. But it's not perfect. As we have seen in the Palisades fires in California, the whole area got cut off from electricity and internet because of pole cables. Additionally, overhead wires in the Midwest snap under ice storms, while New York's underground grid floods during nor'easters. The 2021 Infrastructure Act pledged $65 billion to modernize the grid, pushing states to bury more lines. Yet progress is slow. The US hedges its bets, overhead for affordability, underground for resilience. It's a messy middle ground, but maybe that's the price of a continent-sized nation. It's also not perfect in Japan as well. In 1973, a massive blackout hit Osaka after a single truck snagged a low-hanging cable. When Typhoon Jibi battered Osaka in 2018, 30,000 poles toppled, causing weeks of blackouts. The incident sparked calls for underground systems. But the government balked at the billions of dollars price tag. Critics slammed Japan's reliance on overhead lines. But compare this to Hurricane Sandy in New York. Flooded tunnels left Manhattan dark for days. Buried cables, once hailed as stormproof, became liabilities. The lesson? No system is invincible. Japan's poles fail in wind. Europe's tunnels drown in rain. Adaptation is key. Change is brewing slowly. Since the 1980s, Japan's government has pushed to bury cables targeting tourist hotspots like Kyoto and Nara. But progress is glacial. Only 15% of Tokyo's cables are underground. 
Why? Remember those cost figures at $3.6 million per kilometer, burying all of Japan's cables could cost $350 billion, which is almost 50% of its annual budget for the fiscal year 2025. Meanwhile, tech offers compromises. Smart poles with 5G cameras and EV chargers could declutter skies. In Fukuoka, experimental tunnels have cables and cycling paths. And let's not forget robotics. Drones now inspect overhead lines while AI predicts quake damage. But cultural resistance lingers. Those Denki Shashin photographers aren't alone. Many Japanese see these poles as part of their urban identity, a testament to their ability to thrive in organized chaos. So, which system wins? If you love cyberpunk vibes and rapid recovery from disasters, Japan's poles are iconic. If you prefer pristine streets and stormproof power, Europe's tunnels take the crown. But here's the twist. Neither is perfect. The real solution might lie in hybrid systems, overhead lines, in earthquake zones, underground cables in historic areas, and smart tech everywhere else. The numbers tell the story. Europe's underground approach gives them 85% fewer storm outages and just 12 minutes of annual downtime per customer. But Japan's system, despite its visual chaos, offers faster repairs and better earthquake resilience at a fraction of the cost. Perhaps there's beauty in both approaches, whether it's Europe's clean streets or Japan's honest display of urban infrastructure. What do you think? Should Japan bury its cables or embrace the chaotic beauty? Could Europe learn from Japan's quake-ready mindset? And would you prefer living in a city with messy skies or higher taxes for cleaner views? Drop your thoughts below. If you love cluttered cables and poles, Japan is not the only option. India and Nepal are also alternatives, but that's another story for another video. Thanks for watching. This episode was brought to you with help from these Patreon supporters. If you want to support this channel, head over to Patreon. More interesting videos are coming up. Please subscribe and hit the like button.